pandemic, Tuesday, May 9th. We're going to do the 9 5 next today. Evaluate the following. Okay, who's confused? Who's confused? This is just uh, this is just equal to 17. No, I'm kidding. So here's how this works. Are you guys have you guys ever seen this symbol before? This is called sigma. It's a Greek letter sigma. So start with the bottom. Start with the bottom number. Start from the bottom. End with the top. on top, okay? So what I do is, what this symbol here tells me to do, I've got a 1 on the bottom, so what I do is I plug in a 1 for n, so I do 2 times 1 plus 3, so I have that term, okay? And then I do plus, I plug in, what's 1 more than 1? What's the next number after 1? 2, so then, then I do 2 times 2 plus 3, okay? Then I do 2 times 3, Three plus three. How do I know where to stop? At four. Okay. So this gives me what? Five plus seven plus nine plus uh, eleven, which is twelve plus twenty-one, thirty-three, thirty-two. Twenty-one, thirty-two. That's how I evaluate that, okay? Not too bad, not too bad. Okay? Not too bad. All right, questions, comments, concerns? What will that next one give me then? What will my first term be? 2 minus 1, right, will be the first term. So 1, then a plus. What will that second term be? Uh, if I plug in 3, what's 3 minus 1? 2. So it's going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2, 3, 4, 5. And then plus 5, which is 6, 10, 15. Okay. Negative. Hmm? Not negative. n minus 1, so if I, and n starts at 2, so if I plug in 2 for n, I get 2 minus 1. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's all I do for that. This is called sigma notation. It's a fancy way of writing an arithmetic series. So the only difference between a series and a sequence is um, instead of like commas, instead of like a sequence is just a list of numbers. This is a sum of numbers. I take all the numbers in like a sequence and I add them all together. That's what a series is. Does that make sense? Okay, so like 1 comma 2 comma 3 is a sequence. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is a series. Okay? Series just equal a single number, okay? So these are arithmetic sequences. Do we see why? How did I go from 5 to 7? Added 2, right? How did I go from 7 to 9? Added two, right? There's a common difference. There's a difference of two between each consecutive term every time. Okay, that makes sense. Here, there's a co constant difference of three every time between every term. Okay. So then, two to the n. What kind of series is that? Geometric, right? So let's plug one in. Two to the one is just two. Then let's plug two in for n. 2 to the 2 is 4. Let's plug 3 in. 2 to the 3 is 8, then plus 16, right? So now instead of having the same difference between each of these numbers, each of my terms, right, I have the same like ratio, right? I multiply them by the same thing every time. You get the next number. So this is a geometric sequence or series, geometric series. These are arithmetic sequences. Series, sorry, series, sorry. I'm going to mess that up a bunch. I apologize ahead of time. All right, so then, uh, can we run to B? All right, so this one only has um, 99 terms, okay? So let's start writing those out, okay? What's my first term? 
first term. When I plug 1 in, what do I get? Negative 1 plus, uh, what's the next term? When I plug 2 in, what do I get? 1. When I plug 3 in, what do I get? 3 plus 5 plus 7. Okay, it won't take too long. Just kidding. Well, I'm not doing that. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. We need a better way of doing this, right? So I do it very similar to the way I do for a sequence, okay? I need to know my first term. What's my first term in this sequence, or series? A sub 1 equals negative 1. And what's my common difference? What am I adding each time to get to the next term? 2. So I know those two things. With those two things, there's a powerful formula that I can use. And that's where it says, time now, formulas for series. Uh, it doesn't say I'm here, but it says in the textbook. Okay, these are going to be really important, okay? Uh, let me flip through this. Got kind of crazy at the staff meeting this morning, so I guess I'm not going to flip through that all the time. Just kidding, not be crazy. But, uh, okay, let's see series, series. So the sum of an. Uh, sum of a finite arithmetic series is it's going to be a number of okay yeah so the sum for an arithmetic sequence the sum of an arithmetic sequence that formula the sum is going to be the number of terms in the sequence times there's two times the first term plus the last term all over two or you can also do another option is you can do the number of terms in the sequence divided by two times two a plus one plus So all I, I know my a sub 1, right? My first term. Or do you guys want me to label these? Do you guys want me to label these variables so you know what's going on? Okay. This is the common difference. This is the first term. This is the number of terms in the series. And this is the last term. If you use that one. A sub n is the last term. This is the last term in this series. Let's use that formula then to find this sum. I have my first term, right? What's my first term there? Negative 1. What common difference is 2? How many terms are going to be in this series? What's that? 100. Be careful. Um, you started at 1, right? If you started at 0, there would have been 101, right? Does that make sense? Right? When you count, when you count to 100, you start with 1. Right? There's 100 numbers. We, as a kid, right, you don't start with 0. So if you were to start with 0, if this were like n equals 0 on bottom, it'd be 100 once. Just be careful. Yeah, n equals 100. Okay? So the sum of all those, right? What's my formula? All right, it's going to be 100 divided by 2. Times two times negative one plus a hundred minus one times two. Simplify that in your calculator or by hand. That's nine nine times two. Is that one hundred ninety eight? What's 
150 times 196. Questions, comments, concerns on that? You guys concerned? Are you? Um, it depends what you have. Um, I don't know. Probably a matter of personal taste, right? I don't know. I think. Uh, I think. Um, Math is easier than giving people relationship advice. Um, some people think giving relationship advice is easier than math. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to do it in like order. Right? Give it a, I feel like you like a hard example problem, so I'm not sure. You shouldn't be texting your class. You told me to text it. I said ask Danny, not like not like a media. Oh, that is Danny. I texted it. All right. I'm Coach Double Prime. That's all I know. If you guys take a calculus, you'll just learn what Double Prime means. Yeah. I'm Coach Double Prime. I can tell you the concavity function. I'm Coach Double Prime. <laughs> There's a formula called F Double Prime of X that tells you the concavity of the function. Hey, I'm here to accompany my student. I'm going to come back for his signing day. Just like being the buddy book. I was here every step of the way with Danny. Uh, you know, I've known him since he was a kid. I actually just did a sister when he was a kid, but still. Like, uh, double prime? They will. Oh, like Deion Sanders. All right. What about the topic? Okay. Let's write down the first term in this series, okay? When I plug in n equals 1, what do I get? Negative 2 times 3 to the 1 minus 1 is negative 2 times 3 to the 0, is ne which is negative 2. So my first term is negative 2. What's my second one going to be? So negative 2 plus what? Each subsequent term is just going to be the previous one multiplied by what? Geometric or arithmetic, and how do we know? Geometric. Why is it geometric? Because I'm just multiplying by the same thing. Instead of adding the same thing each time to get from one term to the next, I'm multiplying by the same thing. Okay? So that's what's called, what's that same thing I'm multiplying by? Common. Three, the common ratio, right? Thank you, thank you. Um, all right. And this, how many terms does this? series have in it? 15, which is finite, right? 15 is a finite number. It is not infinite. Okay? You guys remember when they were 15 years old? Right? When you were 15, you had lived a finite number of years, okay? Unlike, uh, unlike Gandalf. When every day was a life day. Uh, Gandalf is finite. Ah, I gotta talk to my friend. My friend studies metaphysics. I don't know if Gandalf is infinite or finite. Because he preceded time. Anyway. Um, so what formula do you think I'm going to use for this? So there's a, yeah, so there's going to be a sum of a finite geometric sequence. So the sum of a finite, this is a finite geo. Sum of a finite geometric sequence is S equals the first term times 1 minus the common ratio raised to the number of terms all over 1 minus the common ratio. Okay, So a sub 1 again is your first term. r is your common ratio. That is a horrible arrow. Wow. Just 
caffeine isn't hitting me as hard as I thought it would. And is your number of turns. Okay. And we have all three of those, right? Probably need another couple seconds to write that down. So finite geo is given by that formula. Infinite geo is actually easier. You can sum an infinite number of terms together. Cr above the common ratio. Yeah, the same thing. Yeah, the same thing. I would not confuse you. That'd be terrible. I use the same symbol for like, guys. I use R for both of these, but they need to do this. That'd be terrible. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's go down here and use the formula. Okay, so we have our a sub one. We have everything we need to evaluate that, right? So that sum is going to be negative two times one minus three to the fifteenth all over 1 minus 3. Is that right? Yeah. Any questions? So let's put that in Terry. Okay. In Terry. Uh, I'm going to do the fraction button. You guys want me to show you how to do it in your calculator or you think you're good? 1 minus 3 to the 15th. 1 minus 3. Ooh! We got negative 1 million, uh, no, negative 14 million, 348,906. Does that sound right? You guys? It grows really fast. These, these like grow really fast. You ever seen like the, like the thing where they're like, would you like a million dollars or like one dollar on the first day of the month, then two dollars on the second day of the month? That's okay. Actually, this, this series, this sequence, what it's doing is it's growing exponentially. So I, I imagine the last term is just like massive. So that's why this is, these should give you a pretty big number. Geometric se series should give you a big number a lot of the time. All right. Oh, let's see what Ms. White got. Oh, she didn't do this one. Uh, I don't know what symbol is supposed to be on top of that one. Let's make it an infinity. So sometimes, are you okay if I move on to the next one? Okay. Sometimes there will be an infinity on the top. Okay. There's going to be an infinity symbol. Okay. So let's just take it one step at a time. What's the first term in this C series? So plug in a one. Six Two. times one third to the one. Six times one third to the one. What's one third to the one? One third. What's six times one third? Two. It's going to be two plus, and then each uh, subsequent term, we're just going to multiply by one third. Right? So six times one third squared is two thirds. Six times, so we're going to multiply that by, uh, what is that, six times? That's six over 27, right? Plus two ninths, plus two twenty sevenths. So, is this a geometric or arithmetic series? How do we know? Geometric. Why is it geometric? What are we multiplying by each time? One third. One third, right? So, our common ratio, that number that we multiply every time to get from term to term, that's one third here. And um, note that, that that one third, one third is between one negative one and one. That's really important here. Okay. What's the first term? A sub one equals two. What's the last term? What's the last term here? Thank you, got it. Yeah, there is no, there is not one. There is no last term. There is no last term. Okay, um. So then let's go back up to the timeout section. Okay, what color shall I use for this? Green. Green, okay. Dark green or the line green? Dark. Dark, okay. Yeah. Well, forest green. Infinite geo, the sum is the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. That's only if, only. 
if your common ratio is between negative 1 and 1. Okay. If your common ratio is not between that, it, it's just going to be infinite. It's going to be infinite. Okay. That makes sense? All right. Um, yeah. Your common ratio has to be between negative 1 and 1 for your ge infinite geometric series to converge. Okay. So let's do that down here, right? So my sum, what's my A1? 2 over 1 minus 1 third, which is 2 over 2 thirds, which is 2 times 3 over 2, which is 3. Use your calculator if you need to. Okay. Any questions on this stuff so far? So it's very formulaic. It's kind of, it's, it's, your guys' part is just going to be identifying what kind of series is this, what formula do I use, and where do I plug in what. Does that make sense? Okay, you okay about this? Not too bad? Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I'm going to skip that one. I feel like it's not incredibly important. Let's go down to three. Yeah. The rest, the whole rest of the notes is just doing what I just talked about. Okay. So I'm not going to give you a video tonight as long as we're paying attention to the rest of the class. Uh, okay. I'm not going to give you a video tonight as long as we're paying attention to the rest of the class. Uh, right, so because I think that you guys have learned the concept, we just got to do examples now, okay? And I, if I just make examples, you guys aren't going to watch it, okay? So we're going to skip that part, we're going to go down to 3. I'm on 3A. Find the sum, okay? So you guys want steps here? Like steps? Do you like steps? Okay. First step, you got to identify what kind of series. Identify the type. Is it arithmetic, finite geo, or infinite geo? What? Uh, this, this is the first one I can look at, to be honest. Yeah, it looks arithmetic. How do you know she's a witch? She looks like a witch. Yeah. So this is arithmetic, right? How do we know it's arithmetic? We're adding the same thing every time. What is, what's that same thing we're adding? So B equals 4. Okay. Identify the type. Identify D or A, depending on what kind it is, and A sub 1, and sometimes A sub N. You done, Sir Hunnett? Thank you, sir. You need to pass. And then plug into the formula. That's like step three. Plug into correct formula. So this first one is So D equals 4. What else do I need to know for my... Oh, and, I, and, and identify the number of terms. So what's my A1 here? And how many terms do I have? Six. Okay. Do you, are you guys confused, like, why I knew I needed to identify all three of those? It's because if I go up here and I look at the formula for the, my sum formula, I need to know all three of those things. I need to know the number of terms, the first term, and the common difference. Let me see what this white does. Let me see what she does. Email this white to beg her. Uh, so what is this? I have the formula ready. N over 2, so number of terms is 6. That 
two times a sub one. Yeah. Plus uh, so that n minus one. So that's it right there. Any questions how I got this far? All right, so then this is 3 times negative 14 plus 20, which is 3 times 6. Questions? Comments? Concerns? All right. Can I go to this next one? All right. Okay. Arithmetic, geometric, or infinite geometric? How do we know it's arithmetic? You're, right, you're subtracting 7 each time. So d equals negative 7. Um, what's my first term? 17. What's the number of terms? You don't know. Do you need to know? No, you don't. So I gave you two formulas, remember? Oh, uh, wait, actually, you kind of do. So let's think of how we might quickly find the number of terms, right? Okay, so let's treat it as a sequence, right? Right, here's a sequence, okay? We want to find how many terms there are in the sequence, right? So we're going to use this formula. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n sub 1 minus the times d, okay? We know two things here. What do we know? What can we plug in? We know a sub 1 is 117. And we know d is negative 7. Okay? The nth term, okay, for a sub n, right, I'm going to plug in that last term right there. I'm going to plug in that last term. Okay? 30, if there are n terms in this sequence, then the nth term is equal to 33. So now we have a formula. Do you see how we have an equation we can solve for? You've seen this? We can solve this for n, okay? So 33 equals 117n minus 117. Oh, wait. Oh, let's be careful. Uh, This is still times negative 7. Negative 7 times 
I got a fraction. This can't be true. not expecting Ava Palmer to bring that in today, which is why I had my coffee. And she was like, oh, I brought this. And I was like, oh, I have to drink it. That's very important. Flavor. You need coffee. It's the worst flavor. It's kind of good. Do the Arctic. No. Arctic. What does Arctic taste like? It's so sweet. It's so sweet. You actually Tastes like the Arctic. It's like really cold. Um, are we seeing now how I did that? It just took me a ridiculous amount of salt. Good. So now n equals 13. Yay! Are we done with the problem? No. What? Uh, we could have just counted our fingers. Okay. However, you want to do it, I don't care as long as it's the right answer. So then s equals, use either of those formulas. N over 2, so 13 over 2 times 2 times 117. And it's college math. College math didn't have any numbers in it. There's no numbers. You're just like always oh, doing it stuff with half gravity. And the calculator error. times negative 7, that's minus 84. I got 975. So you guys got? I go, let's do C real quick. C is not super fun. Okay. C is not super fun. Um, what kind of C series is this? What kind of series is this? Uh, it's finite. If it gives you a last number, you see the last number is 98,415. It's finite. It's geometric. Why do we know that? Yeah. Uh, R equals 3. Okay. For our, uh, what's our first term? What's the first term in the series? Uh, what's the number of terms? How do you think we get that? We do the exact same thing. So a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. a sub n, what's that last term there? 98,415 equals my a sub 1. Ah. Times 3 to the n minus 1. Okay. And then I have an equation I can solve for n. Okay. Does that make sense? So let's solve for n. So divide by 5. Nineteen thousand six hundred eighty-three equals 3 to the n minus 1. Ooh, what do we do here? How do I solve when my variable is in the exponent? Yes, please. Yes. Yes, please. 
Log base 3 of both sides, right? If my exponent, or if my variable is stuck in my exponent, then what I do is I look at the base of that exponent, which is 3, I do a log base 3 of both sides, okay? Log base 3 and 3 will cancel out. That equals n minus 1. Log base 3 of 19,000. Hit alpha, y equals. Right here, you'll see log base. Log base 3 of 19,680. Give me 9. 9 equals n minus 1, or n equals 10. Does anyone need to know what I just did? I guess I didn't do that really fast. So I'm going to hit alpha, and then I'm going to hit y equals. I'm going to hit the right arrow key to go over to the function menu, and I'm going to select log base. I want log base 3 of 19,000, what is it, 19,000, 19,000, Going back to notability, n equals 10. Once I have that, this is just plug and chug. Sum equals 5 times 1 minus r to the 10, or 3 to the 10, all over 1 minus 3. Put that in the calculator. last of our notes for the year. Okay, we'll have to review day tomorrow, test Friday, Monday will be a review day for the finals. You need to take it. Yeah. Okay, you guys have like three days of class. Thank you guys, thanks for a